After catching 150 squids in this little place called Saco de Sombrio in the Brazilian island of Filabella, it's about time to fix an old problem, a rudder quadrant. I'm Roberta. And I'm Duca. And after two years bringing this sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life, it's finally time to start exploring. So don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Sunday for a new episode. We can understand a little bit better the route we did. We came today from here, Saco do Sombrio, all the way, and we are here now. And we are going back to Saco da Capela. Because we need to go to Guarujá. Unfortunately, we need to take a few days off. We're going to go to Guarujá to, you know, we told that 10 times already. We need to create a new quadrant and we need to do that in Guarujá because we know people that can do a good quadrant there and not here. So we're going to ride drive the car, go to Guarujá, fix that and come back and that's it. Driving! Let's see how was the trip today. 4 hours and 21, uh, maximum boat speed Average 5, 4.9, that's good, that's that's accurate. Total distance, 21 miles. Now, we need to go to the water, it's just <laughs> way too hot. Sunglasses out, please. Oops, I almost forgot again. Welcome back. Luke is putting the center board up after some days in the water because we are going to Guarujá in some days and if we keep the center board in the water it might get some barnacles so it's better to avoid barnacles on the center board and I'm glad because we went to so many places, different places with a broken quadrant and it's all good, we could steer we didn't need to use the this one it's all good here we go, Fernando trusts Duca to do some tattoos. <laughs> He's gonna trust me to cut his hair. I always, I always cut Duca's hair, but it's like once every two years. Let's see. <laughs> Never cut a hair like this short. No, go. I trust you. Make me pretty again. <laughs> professional, professional. <laughs> Ready. It's okay, thank you. It's ready. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, here we go. Good. The client has a great spot under the shade, but <laughs> the hairdresser is under the sun. Best view in town. It seems like a kid cut your hair. <laughs> I trust her. Are you sure? <laughs> Just to save. 10 bucks. Yeah. He, he's like, I trust her just because he wants to save a, a few bucks. Not many bucks, but yeah, you know, sabbatical time, you need to do everything in a different way. Imagine if it if becomes a good, good haircut for free. Then he's gonna come every <laughs> month to ask Robert to cut his hair. He's gonna follow us everywhere. Just Ta cut his hair. Tattoo, tattoo artist and hairdresser on the same boat. You know that when you cross the, the equator, you need to shave your hair. Yes, no. <laughs> he has no hair. <laughs> he's like, the funny thing is like, no, when we cross the equator, we're going to get a tattoo right on the spot, but he don't want to cut his hair. It's like, it's easier to convince him to get a tattoo than to cut his hair. What do you think? Can I open a hair salon? It didn't cut my ears and my eyes. Just my fingers. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> I didn't get hurt. 
We borrow our friend's car, Gab's car, to go to Guarujá tomorrow. But before we go, we are going to use the car to explore the town today. Sorry, Gab. You're not here. <laughs> you left the car. We have the car key. We need to see around. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good opportunity. Let's go. Actually, we are going out because we need to fill the, the gas tanks. For the dinghy. For the dinghy, so that's the reason why we are moving. <laughs> Let's go! On the kite spot. Supposedly here is where you lunch and you come back. I don't know how you come. Wow, it's a nice place. <laughs> <laughs> there is a mooring, there is shower. No? <laughs> no fresh water. <laughs> the mosquitoes are taking us out of the beach. Out. Out. Organize the house to go to Guarujá today. Luca is taking out the quadrant. It's been a long time we are planning on doing that, and the day finally came <laughs> because we need to build a brand new quadrant. You're gonna say, Oh, so you broke once, you broke twice, there's something wrong. This one was my fault, but I will explain after I take this out. Give me a second. So I'm gonna try to explain you what really happened, in my opinion. This was built like this. So the first time we broke, we broke the support for the autopilot because I believe it was weak. It was made out of stainless steel and there was no reinforcement, it was just a sheet of stainless steel bented and broke exactly on the bend. So we built a really strong support for the autopilot, way too strong even because it broke the whole thing. The way the support was installed that's why we have this opening, it's because this was in the middle and this was a screw here. When this piece came from the welder, I realized there was no chamfer right here. This edge was supposed to have a chamfer and the reason for that is because on the transition in between this vertical piece and the horizontal piece is not 100% flat. There is like a little, it's not a weld, but it's like a really little round place and if there is no chamfer that means that the support will only touch the corner, the edge, instead of touching the flat part and that means that all the force are transferred just through this little line instead of transferred through the whole piece. So was that a mistake from the welder? Yes, but no, because he didn't know that, he didn't see the whole piece, he didn't see on the old one that has a sh had a chamfer and when it arrived I saw it and I'm like, ooh, there is no chamfer and this might be a problem, but we were like one day to leave. We received this literally the day before with sex sale. And I'm like, oh, it's all polished already. If I grind that myself, then I need to polish it. I won't have time to do that. And I'm like, ah, I think it's gonna be okay. And it was not. If the support is not flat with the entire piece, that means that the force is too hard on the edge. And you can tell that there is a crack right on the edge, on both sides. And once this broke, the whole thing breaks because this and this together are really strong, but this alone is really weak. And I believe that's the reason why it broke. And it broke a huge part of the quadrant, as you can tell. First we need to go to the welder tomorrow and see what he says, because we're gonna take this to the welder and have like a meeting and we'll decide tomorrow. See ya! See ya. So cool. Seems like we never left here actually. The First, marina we stay is right there. 
first stop, Reginaldo. He doesn't know we're gonna be here, so that's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> well, even though it sounds like a huge problem to drive over six hours just to fix our quadrant, for us it was a great opportunity to visit some good old friends. And when you need to fix something that important, nothing better than the opinion of friends you trust. And that's why Reginaldo was our first stop. We needed his support to decide how we would approach this fix. One of the welders is not available, so we're gonna go to another welder that's actually really good for aluminium and is a good friend of ours. It's been a long time we don't see him. We're gonna pay him a visit, a surprise visit, mm -hmm. and bring him some work. Let's hope he has time. Everyone is so busy. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna visit a friend that you guys been asking for for a long time. Yeah. As usual, Europe is working, it's so cold inside. And it's a mess inside. A lot of mess. Hello! Thank you. Me too! Of course, we also needed to stop by Pier 26, the marina we spent over two years refitting at. And after some coffee, we decide to visit our friends from Poza Mayor. It is not just a new paint. <laughs> it's everything. <laughs> Their boat was also neglected for years. It was in a mooring boy for over 17 years. back to Ilha Bella. So after talking with a really well-known welder, we decided to reinforce our old quadrant that's made out of aluminum and to give it another try. And maybe in the future, we are gonna have a brand new one made out of stainless steel and use this aluminum one as a spare one. Who knows? We still don't know, actually. <laughs> Look who is back. Check this out. With a gift. Yeah, he came with a gift. He's trying to prove himself that he can go to the Caribbean with us. He wants to do the crossing. I'm like, I need to know how many fish you can catch on the way. So he's trying to prove he's a good fisherman. I can fisherman. fish, I can cook. And can <laughs> clean. That's better. And I'm gonna clean. This is Baia Kuarara. Uh, I could say that's beautiful, but it's not actually. <laughs> well, it's, it's not no, a beautiful fish. Looks ugly, but it's gonna taste really well. It's a little bit uh, tricky to clean because it's poison. It has poison. But and it's slippery as well. They have like a little some I don't know how to say this. It's not waiting. I think it's more than five kilos. It's, we need to buy a, a proper <laughs> a proper tool. At least five kilos. <laughs> ah, this is how you clean. <laughs> Just put <laughs> some water and that's it. So first you take this thing out. How did you learn how to clean it? YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> From Brazil. <laughs> you could edit the video and say like, uh, I learned with my great, great, great. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay. make the cut okay. to get the skin and reach the bone here. Okay. Then you get your hand and see where the bone of the head ends. It's like here. This is deep. Just this one. And you try to reach the tail. Mm, that's why you do that. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Look at this. Mm -hmm. This fish has a bag of poison. This is just meat. Bye, fish. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Ready to be cooked. Proud. <laughs> <laughs> Be 
dishes ready. Oh, we have squeeze. Squid number 10.